Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Money Monday. Come on in. We're going to be getting started in about two minutes. We're going to give folks an opportunity to hop on and then we're going to get right into this 90 day money sprint. Um, I'm so excited to be sharing this content with you all. As always, we're going to be talking about um, some things that you can do to really finish this year off strong financially and how to set yourself up for success in the new year. Right. Most people wait too late. And so by doing it now, we're going to make sure that we're um, going to have a strong start to 2024. So come on in. Hey, Candy, thanks for joining. We're going to give folks about another minute or so, and then we're going to start promptly at nine o'clock per usual. Um, so you still got time. Go run and grab your pen and piece of paper if you don't have it. Hey, Carla, thanks for joining. Um, we're going to get started in a, a, a minute or so. Let's give people an opportunity to hop on. And then we'll get it cracking. Hope you guys are having a great week. This is actually Halloween week. So I don't know if you're giving out candy, you know, candy. <laughs> What's going on? You know, hopefully um, the kids have a great time. I know a lot of people celebrated uh, this past weekend, but I just want everybody to be safe. Make sure that you're paying attention to what's being given out, all that good stuff. So, yeah, my, my favorite time for this season around Halloween is after the actual holiday because that's when all the candy goes on sale. So by about Thursday or Friday, it should be about 90 percent off. <laughs> then I can go get all the candy I want for free. <laughs> all right. It's nine o'clock. Let's get started. OK. And then as people come in, they can get caught up with us. But tonight we're talking about a 90 day money sprint. So I don't know if you guys have calculated, it's um, calculated where we are. There are 65 days left in 2023. I know it was just Valentine's Day last week. And so this year flew by, but there are some things that we can start doing now to help prepare us for 2024. So I'm going to cover that tonight. We're going to talk about what this 90 day money sprint is, what it looks like, um, how to reset, how to get on board, how to start 2024 off strong. Okay. So the next 90 days, there are some big things happening, right? You have Thanksgiving, you have Black Friday, you have Christmas, you have um, the end of year, which a lot of people use to reflect. You have the new year, which a lot of people use to start over, start fresh, new beginnings. And then you have um, your New Year's resolutions. So it's a lot happening in the next 60 to 90 days. Right. And I think that the issue most people have is they wait until the new year. Right. So they say, I'm going to eat whatever I want. I'm going to spend whatever I want. And then when January comes, they're kind of starting over. But the things that I'm going to give you tonight, you can actually do now. And that way, when, when January comes, when 2024 gets here, you're not playing catch up. You kind of have already been doing some of those things that people usually wait to January 1st to do. So let's talk about it. Um, so all of these holidays, all these things going on, not to mention the additional money vampires. So if you have birthdays or anniversaries or maybe some December graduations, all of those things are coming into play in the next uh, 65 to 90 days or so. So we got to be very diligent. OK, one of the first thing that sh things that you can do on this 90 day money sprint is a goal review. Right. So look at your money goals. Did you hit your goals? Why or why not? Right. We're looking at how close are you to hitting your goals? We're focusing on what can we do in the next 65 days that's going to get us closer to our money where we want to be. Right. Whether that's saving more, whether that's spending less, whether that's paying off debt, maybe that's looking for a new role, maybe that's taking a last minute certification, whatever it is, right? What can we do in the next 65 days before this new year hits um, to really focus on us hitting our money goals? That's what you should be looking at right now, right? So go back to that binder, go back to those notes, go back to those New Year's posts from uh, nine, 10 months ago, 10 months ago and figure out what your goals were. Did you hit them? How close are you? So on and so forth. OK, that's really going to give you a clear picture of where you at, where you are at and how far you have to go and how much effort it's going to take to get there. So do that first. OK, so that's in November. And then the second thing that you can do in November, which is in two days, is you can do a money challenge. Right. So right around this time of the year, our, our finances take a big hit. It's all of the eating it's all of the groceries especially with groceries being so high it's all of the gift giving it's the events and our wallets tend to take a um a hit so 
Think about doing a money challenge. Maybe this is not the right time to do a no spend challenge, but you could do 1K in 60 days, right? Where you get a printout, you print out, um, usually it'll have like some kind of icon. You can say, how can I save $1,000, $5,000, $10,000, however much it is in the next 60 days. Um, you can do challenges where you save not everything under a certain amount. So all of your fives, all of your tens, all of your twenties, whatever that looks like, or maybe you just save your hundreds. You can do the weather challenge. Um, it's typically called the weather Wednesday challenge where every Wednesday you pick the highest temperature of that week and you save that amount of money. So if it's going to be 80 degrees that week, that's how much you save with it being colder. And with it getting colder, you can revamp that. You can say, okay, any day that it's under 50 degrees, I'm going to save that temperature, right? So maybe if you have three days where it's 40 degrees, you've saved um, $120, okay? So consider doing the money challenge. Um, are you going to pay off a bill in the next 65 days? So maybe you have a three, four, five hundred thousand dollar bill that you say, okay, in the next 65 days, I want to knock this out. This can be included in your challenge. Maybe you're going to revisit, revisit the $5 jar, like I said earlier, where you don't spend anything, um, any of your fives. So you save all your fives in your jar and you do that for the next 65 days. Maybe say, you know what? I'm, I eat out a lot. I mean, you know, fast fooding it up, door dashing, Uber Eats, whatever. I'm not going to eat out anymore for the rest of the year, right? Or I'm only going to eat out once a week for the rest of the year. So the idea here is to really pull back on your spending so that when you go into 2024, you have a strong foundation. OK, so you can choose your money challenge and start doing that now um, in November and December. And then by January, think about how much money you saved, how much money you would have paid off, whatever your challenge is. Think about that. OK, something else that you can do in Thanksgiving is to in Thanksgiving, in November, in preparation for Thanksgiving is to start shopping now. So a lot of those perishable items, you can get those now. If you need things in uh, canned goods and cans, if you need, you know, different drinks, you can get those. You can get your containers if you normally buy aluminum containers. Um, you can buy gift cards maybe or if you don't trust yourself enough to save that money, just buy a gift card to a Kroger or a Walmart or a wherever so that you can spend that when that time comes. $15, $20, you do that from now until Thanksgiving. That's an extra hundred bucks that, you know, it really didn't put a dent in your budget. Um, something else that you can do is put money in the envelope, right? To start saving for Thanksgiving. So maybe you don't want to buy the gift cards or you say, okay, I like to shop at numerous stores. I, I normally do coupons or whoever has the best deal, whatever the situation is, stick that money in an envelope. And then when Thanksgiving comes, you're not going to have to worry about spending three, four or $500 at the grocery store. After Thanksgiving, what comes next? Black Friday, Black Friday, will hit those pockets up. Okay. So start prepping now for black Friday. We know it's coming. We, you know, we know that they have TVs the size of Minnesota, all of that good stuff. So start prepping now. So what you want to do to help you prep financially for black Friday is to get your list together. What does it look like? Right? Who are you buying for? How much are you spending? What is your budget? Get all of that together. Um, I, the right deals. So if you know that your son wants X, Y, Z, I don't know what kids want these days. I don't know if they want PS5, right? You know, he wants the PS5. Start looking for those deals and then create your budget for your spending. It's not the big items that put a huge dent in our money. It's those small things, right? That, oh, it's only $20. I'll go ahead and get that. I can put that in his stocking. That's what's going to kill your budget financially um, this Black Friday and Christmas and Thanksgiving season. So Create your spending budget, how much you're going to spend for each person, and then stick to it. And then that puts us into Christmas, right? So during Christmas, you can really start prepping in November and December. You can start shopping now. There's nothing saying that you have to wait to start shopping. Start shopping now. Again, have your budget for each person. Um, shop smart. So look for those deals. Use shop uh, sites like Rakuten, which gives you cash back on your purchases to make purchases, whatever you need. Um, usually it's one, two, three, four, five percent on your purchase. But if you're purchasing high price items, that can be a money saver for you. Um, I know I use Rakuten. This is off subject subject, but I use Rakuten when I travel. So I use it on Expedia or Travelocity or whatever the website is. And I can usually get back a couple hundred dollars on my trip. Um, 
revisit your gift giving philosophy. I know that we are so generous, right? But Christmas is really not a time to blow your budget. So you really want to think about who you're gift giving, buying gifts for and why, right? So think about the philosophy, track your spending. You guys know that those purchases can quickly add up. So all it takes is a 50 here, a hundred there, 20, 30, 50, 60, 70, and you're up to a thousand dollars. Okay. And then start talking about your gift exchanges. So if you and your friends typically, or you and your coworkers, or you and your family usually do gift exchanges, start thinking about that now, start talking about that now so that when December hits, you're prepared. Okay. The next thing that you can do um, when it, in December is think about your reflections, right? So think about 2023, think about your year month by month. So what are some milestones that you accomplished? Uh, what are some great things that you did? What are some areas of improvement that maybe, you know, you, you want to do better? Maybe you didn't do as good as you wanted to. Um, think about any challenges you had. What are you most proud of for 2023? Start compiling all that information. Think about if you want to change one thing, what would it be, right? Because that's going to help you design your next year that's coming up. Um, what worked, what didn't work, what are you grateful for? You can review your Amazon purchases, your Target purchases, um, your credit card statements, right? Um, you can, most bank accounts have a spend analyzer. So they'll tell you what areas you spent money on. So did you spend it on eating out? Did you spend it on shopping? Take advantage of that at your bank or um, on your credit card websites as well so that um, you can kind of get a better idea of how you're spending your money, where that money is going. And again, look for those areas of improvement. What you're really looking for is the areas of improvement and the weak, weak links where you can get stronger. OK, so that's what you're doing in your reflections. We're already in January, right? So we've done those things. Now we're in January. Um, of course, you have your resolutions and we'll talk about that in depth in a second. But something else that you want to do once January hits, right? Don't wait till the second week of January. Don't wait till the third week. January 1, you're not at work, hopefully. Um, so start thinking about those new money goals. You can revisit old goals that you have or you can come up with new goals. Did you accomplish those goals? You maybe have another four or $500 to save um, for your money goal. Revisit that. Create those new money goals for the new year. Something else that you want to do is create your 2024 budget. So you really want to be looking at how you spent in 2023 and you should have already done that um, with your reflections and then how you want to spend in 2024. That's going to be instrumental in helping you um, be successful when it comes to this 90 day money sprint. Um, you also want to look at your MVRs, your most valuable resources. So our three most valuable resources are time, money and focus, right? where you're spending your time, how you're spending your money and what you're focusing on. What do you want that to be in 2024? What does that look like? What does your focus look like? What do you want to focus on? What goals are you looking at? Figure it out so that as January comes and goes and as we get to that last um, three weeks in January for our 90 day money sprint, you're ready. In January, you also want to do a self-assessment. So again, where are some areas of opportunity that I can really focus on this year? Maybe I need to work on my emo emotional intelligence. Maybe I want to work on my public speaking. Maybe I want to work on my saving or my debt repayment, whatever that is. Start looking at that self first so that you can do that. This is also an ample time for you to start prepping for your vision boards. So hopefully you, you've been collecting magazines throughout the year. So you have an idea of what you need and all you have to do is go get the cardboard, maybe a couple markers, maybe some scissors and you're good to go. Create your steps to success. So what does success financially, financial success look like for you in 2024? That's something that you can be doing in the first part of January. You can do your money inventory. You really want to do your money inventory before you start looking at your 2024 budget so that you know what's coming in, what's going out, what's old, what's due, when, how much on average, so on and so forth. OK, and then you also want to be looking at in January, what can you do to strengthen your money? So creating and using your budget is not any good. If you use it, if you if you create it and you don't use it. Right. So creating and using your budget, paying off debt and avoiding avoiding debt. I've said this before. I'll say it again. Um, my lifestyle did not elevate until we focused on debt repayment. So really focus on getting that um, monthly debt number down. 
Um, maybe you want to strengthen saving for emergencies. Maybe you want to get into investing. Do you need a side hustle? Um, paying your bills on time. This is a struggle for some people. So making sure that you're actually paying those bills and you're upholding the commitments that you said that you would financially. And then focusing on the small things. Again, it's not these massive things that sink our ship, right? On average, people aren't going out buying $5,000, $10,000, $20,000 cars every month. It are the, it's those small purchases, those Starbucks runs every week that's putting a uh, weight on you, first of all, and taking money out of your account. It's those small things. So focus on those small things. And then that wraps up our 90 day money sprint. So if you do these things right, if you start now, you'll be in such a better position financially. And this just doesn't have uh, have apply to your money or happen with your money. This can be with your weight loss. Right. If you want to lose weight. Start now, right? If you know that that's something that you struggle with, maybe you put on a few pounds this year, start now. Incorporate that into November and December so that by the time January comes and everybody is in the gym, taking up all the machines, you would have already been in the gym. And that's it. Be the ant, not the grasshopper. Um, if you start now, like I said, with this 90-day money sprint, you will be ahead of the curve. These things, it sounds like a lot. I talk to her a lot, but these are very simple things that you can do now. They don't take a long time. They don't take a lot of bandwidth or brain power. If it's too much trying to do everything, just pick one or few things that you want to focus on um, in November and December to help you on your path. Okay, that's it. That's all. Thank you guys for joining. Make sure you share this video with people who want to start off 2024 strong. I love you guys and I will see you next week. Bye-bye.